We all know what Ramadan entails. We know the schedule. We know it involves fasting. We know it involves suhoor. We know that it involves reading the Quran. We know that it involves charity. We know that it involves taraweeh. We know the routine. And we also know the feeling of Ramadan passing at the end of the month and us looking back and saying, I wish that I had done more. I wish that I had taken better advantage. Oh Allah, please allow me to experience another Ramadan so that I can do better. And here we are at the brink of doing better. We are half a month away from Ramadan. And so the question becomes, what are we doing to prepare for this month? And I want to share with you, inshallah ta'ala, five or six quick tips. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah, wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Wa safiuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh. بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة تركهم على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلاة ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء تقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We seek his guidance and his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the whispering of our desires whom Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whom He allows to be misled, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone having no partners, and that Muhammad wasallam is His slave and His messenger and His perfect worshiper. To proceed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah At-Tawbah speaks to the Prophet wasallam about the munafiqeen. And after the Prophet ﷺ had went to the campaign of Tabuk and he returned back, he found 80 or more hypocrites in the city of the Prophet ﷺ that had not went on the campaign. And they, when Rasulullah ﷺ arrived, the first thing that he did was he set up shop in the masjid. Even before going to his family, he came straight to the masjid. And he listened to the excuses of 80 some odd hypocrites. And they gave him excuses. They said, awra, Our houses were unprotected. They weren't ready. And the Rasulullah accepted all of their excuses. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Afallahu ank lima adhintalahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu may Allah forgive you. Why did you give them? Why did you accept their excuses? Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a statement and he says, وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجِ لَأَعَدُّوا لَهُ عُدَّةِ Allah says, if they had truly wanted to go on the campaign with you, they would have prepared for it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is criticizing Failure that is due to the lack of preparation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is criticizing failure that is due to a lack of preparation. And he said, if they had truly wanted to succeed, if they had truly wanted to go with you, they would have prepared for it. The opposite of the munafiqeen, of course, are the sincere. And the greatest of the sincere is the one whose name is As-Siddiq, the truthful, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And we see in the example of Abu Bakr, when Rasulullah was preparing to migrate to Medina, and he's giving permission for one group of companions to leave, and this companion to leave, and this companion to go, and to migrate, and to migrate, and to migrate. Abu Bakr who is not told to migrate, and he is not given permission, and he is not told that he is going to migrate with the Prophet but because he was sincere, and he truly wanted 
to migrate with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prepared two camels. He purchased two camels, not one. He purchased two, just in case. And he is feeding them with the best of feed, these camels. Just in case the Prophet sallallahu shows up at his house, mulathham, with his face covered, at a time Aisha radiallahu anha says during the day where the Prophet sallallahu would never visit them, even though he would visit every day. And he shows up during the middle of the day with his face covered and he tells Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he says, I was commanded to migrate. And Abu Bakr says, as ya Rasulullah, am I going to be your companion? And the Prophet sallallahu said, as yes, you're going to be my companion in the hijrah. Aisha says, as a young girl, I did not know that people could cry out of happiness until I saw my father in that moment crying out of happiness. That's the difference between someone who's sincere, wanting to go on that journey. He's ready. I've got the two camels ready. And someone who's not. They would have prepared for it. I say this as an introduction to our brief khutbah, which is the guest that's around the corner of Ramadan. And preparing for the month of Ramadan. We all know what Ramadan entails. We know the schedule. We know it involves fasting. We know it involves suhoor. We know that it involves reading the Quran. We know that it involves charity. We know that it involves taraweeh. We know the routine. And we also know the feeling of Ramadan passing at the end of the month and us looking back and saying, I wish that I had done more. I wish that I had taken better advantage. Oh Allah, please allow me to experience another Ramadan so that I can do better. And here we are at the brink of doing better. We are half a month away from Ramadan. And so the question becomes, what are we doing to prepare for this month? And I want to share with you, inshallah ta'ala, five or six quick tips. And more importantly, I want to invite you after this khutbah to go back and, and have this discussion with your family. Have this discussion with your friends. Involve whoever it is that you need to involve, but to remind each other of the importance of taking advantage and preparing for Ramadan so that when this guest comes, we are ready to go. Nobody runs a marathon off the couch. I don't know anybody who's ever done that. Jumps right off the couch and tries to run 26 miles? That doesn't happen. Ramadan is 30 days. We know that it's a marathon. So let's prepare. So the first, the first of the things that I want to mention is to simply intend to do good in Ramadan. Intend to do good. Because if a person intends and says sincerely, committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am going to pray the nights of Ramadan. Even if a person becomes impeded for whatever impediment comes their way, whether it's sickness or whether it's travel, they get that reward because they intended to do it. They committed to doing it. If a person commits to giving charity, even if that charity is impeded, you get rewarded. Your intentions will actually allow you to reach levels that your actions don't reach. And so the first is committing to, the first is intending. The second is to start practicing, or even before that is to have goals. What are my goals for Ramadan? What did I accomplish last year? How can I increase this year? Is my goal to read this much Quran? Is my goal to attend these many prayers in the masjid? I want to commit to praying this in jama'ah during Ramadan. What are my goals? Thinking about those goals seriously and trying to make those goals things that are smart, that they're specific, they're measurable, they're actionable, they're realistic. Don't sabotage yourself in Ramadan by having a goal that you've never ever accomplished or anywhere come close to. I want to read the Quran 10 times over in Ramadan. Well, I've never even completed it twice. So let me actually get better, inshallah ta'ala, and have goals that are reasonable and goals that, but having goals is the most important thing. The second, is to start practicing what your schedule might be like and to start building in those discipline, uh, building discipline in those areas from now. So if I know that Ramadan is going to include a lot of standing and I know that I'm absolutely shattered by the fourth night of Ramadan, like half of the community is, then let me practice standing now. Let me add a little bit of Qiyamul Layl now. Let me make sure that I am fasting. The Prophet Sallallahu would fast more in the month of Sha'ban than in any other month. That's part of the preparation for the fast of Ramadan. And right now we're in the three white days, the 13th and the 14th and the 15th this weekend. So maybe I fast tomorrow, maybe I fast Sunday, that I get ready for the month of Ramadan. Also, the third is to remove the decision-making process as much as I can. Ramadan comes and we're not in the Muslim world where everything stops for Ramadan. 
Our work doesn't stop, our school doesn't stop. And so we are juggling so many things and we suffer from decision fatigue many times. And so as best as I can that I remove whatever decisions I need to do, what are my, what's the iftar schedule going to be in my family? What's the calendar going to look like? Where am I going to pray taraweeh? What are the things that I'm going to be doing throughout the month? As best as I can, whatever decisions we can remove as a family before Ramadan, let us do that and let's commit to it. The fourth is trying to keep up with my, my Qur'an and my adhkar in Ramadan. You know, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the thing that the Prophet sallallahu gave as advice to everybody who's too busy. Everybody who's too busy to do anything. The Prophet sallallahu would tell him, let your tongue be moist with the remembrance of Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu was asked, in the hadith that's reported by Ahmed, which of those who fast is best? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لِلَّهِ ذِكْرَى The one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. Maybe I'm very busy at my work. Maybe I am already annoyed or, or, or grieved that I don't feel like I'm going to be able to do as much this coming Ramadan. But you know what I can do, whether I'm at work or whether I'm at school, wherever I am, I can increase in my dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so making sure that my dhikr is very strong, that I commit to the adhkar of the morning, I commit to the adhkar of the evening, I increase in the dhikr that I make throughout the day, and putting up whatever system I need to put up for me to succeed. So maybe that's a group that I have with my friends or with my family members, and we commit to these adhkar that we make. We remind each other in the morning and the evening to make these adhkar. But I commit to increase in my dhikr during the month of Ramadan and to increase in my reading of the Qur'an as well. And the fifth, of course, is the big thief. And that is social media and our attention. I know people who in Ramadan, they leave their WhatsApp groups. They leave their social groups. They go zero dark 30 for that month and they come back on eight. Their return is more happiness to their groups on the day of eight. Some people may leave a group never to return again. They're not allowed back in. But the point here is that minimizing my social media, but minimizing it from now. You know, and there are a million tips and tricks that a person can do. There's a million different apps that a person could do, but I'll just suggest one thing. You know, in the, in the world of digital minimalism, they talk about this a lot, which is that if you cannot delete the social media apps for whatever reason during Ramadan, that you, if you have a desktop, that you move those apps from your phone to your desktop. And it becomes a completely different experience. And so I still have Facebook, but I have it on my desktop instead of on my phone. So I'm not carrying it with me everywhere. I can still check it at times during the day, but I minimize it. Instagram, all of these apps, all of the most popular apps have a desktop version. And so I put it on my desktop instead of on my phone. I can still check in daily, but checking in on your, lap, on your desktop or your laptop is much different than checking in on your phone. Minimizing your social media as best as you can. And the sixth is preparing your charity. Preparing your charity. We all know Ramadan has fundraisers. I have a big surprise for you. You are going to walk into many fundraisers in Ramadan. And you're going to go online and you're going to see many fundraisers. This is the nature of Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ajwad ma yakunu fi Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous in Ramadan and we all know that he was like the wind touching everything. And so preparing my charity from now, preparing the idea of charity, you know what, sometimes we take on extra shifts to, to prepare for a vacation. But what about in the next two weeks, for example, I take on extra shifts at work for the purpose of giving charity in Ramadan. We know that it's going to be intense everywhere that we go for Gaza in Ramadan. We, we, that's what we expect. And they are obviously deserving of every dollar that reaches them. But simply walking into Ramadan with the intent of I'm, this year I'm prepared for charity. I'm not going to be on another 27th night or last, last nights of Ramadan not having anything to give because I wasn't ready. If there's any year where I'm going to be ready, with whatever I'm ready with, I'm going to be ready this year. I'm not going to be caught without competing in one avenue of khair, one of the greatest avenues of khair in Ramadan, which is the avenue of charity. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to allow us to hear the speech and follow the best of it. أَقُولُ مَا سِمِعْتُمْ مُسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيُوَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله صلى الله عليه وسلم على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سلم كثيرا. For those of you who are just joining, we mentioned seven quick ways for a person to take advantage of preparing, إن شاء الله تعالى, for the month of Ramadan. The first we said was to have an intention, the intention of doing good. The second was to have goals. 
The third was to start practicing your schedule now as best as you can. Number four was to remove the decision-making process. The fifth was to try to keep up with your adhkar as best as you can. And the fifth was to monitor your social media. And the sixth was to prepare your charity. We ask Allah Azza wa to allow us to experience the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma inna nas'awluka al-jannah wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Zakiha anta khayru man zakkaha. Anta waliyuha wa maulaha. Rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbani saghira. Rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbani saghira. Rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbani saghira. Allahumma rahmaka bi ahlina fi kulli makan. اللهم رحماك بأهلنا في غزة اللهم كلهم ناصر يوم قل الناصر اللهم كلهم معين يوم قل المعين اللهم اشف مرضاهم وارحم موتاهم وتقبل شهداءهم وداوي جرحاهم ودل على المفقود منهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم رحماك بأهلنا في السودان وسائر بلاد المسلمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد حكوم إلى صلاتكم يرحم الله